Why did I pick the Focustronic versus all the other auto testers out in market right now? Hey, what's up, Reefers? I know I start out a lot of videos saying that I'm super excited today, but for this one, that would be an understatement. This is, I'll say, a year and a half in the making. Finally, we got hands on a Alcatronic. We're gonna open it up with my Caesar from Taiwan. If it is all food from Hong Kong, it will be more exciting. That would be amazing, right? <laughs> all right, you guys ready? Cue the Zelda chess opening music. <laughs> Pulling this out right here. First up, we got the Alcatronic. We also got his companion, the Dolstronic. Really quickly, I'm gonna open the box as I talk. <laughs> here we go, look at this. So here is um, Alcatronic from Focustronic. Basically, it will automatically test your alkalinity. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into why I chose the Alcatronic um, over say like the Trident or the KH Director or the um, Reef Bots. There's a really specific reasons, actually a couple reasons. And it just kind of pushed me towards this general direction. I'm not just kind of playing it up to the video. It, it actually feels really surreal to actually hold this in my hand. Because it has been released for what? Is it, has it been like a year and a half or two years? And I've always thought about it, um, always wanted to try one, but I knew that. Hi. Hey, 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 come back here. It's so cute. Come back here. What are you eating? Come back here. <laughs> All right, so I've always wanted to try one, um, but I knew the 45 gallon tank is temporary. I was gonna upgrade. So now it happened. We got a 145 up and running, and um, first thing I first thing wanna do is get my hands on. No. Hey, hey! First impression is that this unit is actually a lot smaller than I was expecting. Um, just some pictures online, and maybe there's no sense of scale and stuff like that. It looks really bulky and big, but um, but you're small, small too. Small. So if we open this up, it actually looks like this. Really, really cool. Alcatronic, Alcatronic's um, company, the owner Eric uh, in Hong Kong, before he shipped this unit out, he did an upgrade. I believe a firmware upgrade and also he did a uh, check for me before he shipped it out just to make sure everything is on the up and up. So that's why there may be a little condensation in there. Actually, no, there isn't. It's clean. Everything looks good. And here's a probe as well, pH probe. All right, well, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth and here's, I think it's a, yeah, here's a beaker for testing. Of course, we'll, we'll open it up later and stuff. Oh, it's just surreal to actually hold this in my hand. I'm, I'm excited, dude. I'm really excited. Okay, I'm gonna sign. Let me make sure I don't break anything. And once again, uh, construction, good. Hard plastic, no complaints. Uh, actually feels a lot more solid in my hand than what I envisioned. Uh, seeing online, for whatever reason, I feel like it, it feels a little bulky, a little flimsy. But ho holding this unit in my hand, it is well built. Again, I must come. I must comment on how small this unit actually is. I thought it's a lot bigger, which is good. Right here, we got the Dostronic. This is a product that Focustronic came out with. I think it's like a year, a year and a half afterwards. Uh, supposed to work with the Alcatronic. Basically, Alcatronic, based on whatever value it tested, it's going to tell the doser to dose whatever elements that you think is necessary. Um, but I don't plan on setting this up for at least like a couple months. Here's a, ah, this is so cute. Again, these. It's like a steamer for bottle. It looks like a, yeah. <laughs> Milk well, bottle. She say, she say it looks like a steamer. To me, it looks like a little toaster. Oh yeah. Right? It's, it's really small. Again, I have to comment on how small this actually looks. Maybe, maybe to you guys it looks really big. But in person, I was like, oh, it's actually smaller than I expected, which is cool. We'll open this guy up. Five head doser. How awesome is that? They've been getting fantastic reviews on the Electronic and Dostronics. That's one of the major reasons I went with them. There are a lot of different options out there and consistently I hear great things about them, especially the customer service. If there's any issue that arise, um, Eric and Jonas seems to take care of the problem pretty much within hours. It's pretty impressive. So everybody just have like glowing view of them. And again, that is one of the really, really big reasons that I ended up going with them because they stand behind the product. If you want to talk to the manufacturer or the designer of this unit, which is Jonas, um, easily reachable. And they are hobbyists at heart. All right, guys, this is a really quick look of the Electronic and those Chronic. I just want to see you the actual physical size because I feel like for whatever reason, I just keep thinking they're huge, but they're really nice, small size. This should be up and running in a day or two. And um, if you're watching this video, that means I've successfully set it up. So I'll see you guys in a couple days. Yeah. The next morning. Here's the part that I can honestly say that I will not enjoy because this involves physically setting up the, um, the machine. 
I think if you know what you're doing, you can probably get it done in like 15 minutes or something like that. Um, but for me, I am estimating maybe two hours. <laughs> so I thought about moving the ATO container out of the way and just place this right here. This actually fit perfectly here, but the only issue with placing that at the bottom is that the uh, dosatron, if you can look at look here, it may get a little bit goofy if I place it like right there. I mean, it's okay if I can hang it off a little bit, but at the same time, if I hang it off a little bit, I won't be able to put the panels on onto the stand, even though I've never actually put the panel on, I think. I could also do something like this, but I feel like this may also be slightly dangerous with uh, especially with a kid running around. So I think what I may end up doing is actually just kind of putting it in the back. <sighs> Like so. I'm just gonna park it right in front so it looks a lot cleaner. Uh, I'm lucky enough that the shelf is deep enough for me to do something like this. All right, well, I know the longer I wait, the less likely I'm gonna do it. So let's get this installed. 2,000 years later. All right, guys, we're almost there. Things are looking really nice and neat. Uh, we got the reagent set up. We got the uh, tank water in and then wastewater out. For tank water in, I got a... Uh, a line holder right there which fits perfectly the interesting thing is that uh, you probably can't see it here but it actually has like a um, actually here we go here's a spare here's this uh micro filter that i need to attach to the end of the intake i guess to kind of filter out any um a little detritus and stuff to make sure it does not get into the machine uh, so i need to make sure this stays submerged underwater and luckily i was able to find some um air line holders that I can kind of jam the line underneath and it keeps the it keeps the microfilter underwater, which is perfect. Wastewater can actually go right back into the sump. At first I was a little skeptical, but then um, in the Focustronic Facebook group, which is really, really active by the way, a lot of people actually dump the wastewater right back into the sump. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. This way I figure we can like top off water a little bit less and keep the salinity a little bit more stable. Problem I have now is the rat's nest of wire down here. To be fair, the Alcatronic only added one additional power block, but I need to address this soon because this is pretty ridiculous. Thankfully, nothing's really drawing a lot of power, but uh, once the rest of the light comes in, then that's really gonna push this thing right here. I don't know, a lot of you guys are probably shaking your head right now. Before I was contemplating switching out actually one of the outlet to uh, the ground fault protected ones. But the problem with that kind of outlet, after I was done doing it, people were saying that there's a lot of false positives, meaning that sometimes um, it would just randomly pop and then you killed all the heating and all the flow in your tank and end up crashing your tank. So I'm like, oh, all right. So ultimately I changed it back to a regular outlet, um, thinking that the regular fuse inside the house is gonna help take care of this. But we're gonna address this at some point pretty soon. Right now, just know that I know it's a rat's nest. We'll address this. The next day. Morning guys, I'm in my nice pink boxer. Need some uh, nice clean zero TDS water. Right now it's spitting out TDS of one. Um, so I'm gonna change the... Oh. Uh. All right guys, here's the fun part. Um, instead of using the milliliter to try to figure it out, we're gonna use weight. It's a little bit more accurate. I stole the kitchen scale, don't tell Emily, and we zeroed it out, so it's at zero gram right now. Uh, I'm gonna start adding the concentrated reagent in here, and we're probably gonna go somewhere around here, and then we'll just go by years. We're just gonna wing it. Um, so I'm trying to do some math in my head. Uh, one to four, so for every 100 millimeter, I get 400. I add 400 of uh, RDI water. So if my math is correct, I think I'm doing 300 milliliter of uh, reagent and then uh, say something to be 1200 milliliter of RDI water. And of course we're gonna... And of course we're gonna like kinda, uh, so we got this much buffer room uh, in case I need to overrun it a little bit. Uh, we're gonna do it by weight. So I'm gonna add roughly 300 milliliter roughly here of reagent and then we're gonna ask, add out. Uh, we're gonna see the weight and then we're gonna times four. All right, let's go. All right, careful. Careful, we don't want to get this on him. Where is it? This is chemical. What? Wait, that you were it earlier. 242 times 4 is what? What? Plus 242. So, 1210 gram is what I want to hit. What? Hey, what? You just said the scale is the chemical, yeah? No, no, no. What the f? Alright, guys, very exciting. We're actually going to power on the electronic for the very first time together. There we go. Let's see. Please wait. The next day. It was a reverse. So I know I said that I'm not gonna set up the Dostronic for a couple months. Sitting at 5.51, uh, super low. 
pH is also low, it's about like 7.5 according to the Alcatronic, but that may be because of the al low alkalinity. Already, one really great thing I noticed about Alcatronic is the trend. Uh, because the value is outside the spec, so it's been testing every single hour, which is fine. I mean, the reagent is pretty cheap in comparison. And this is a trend I'm seeing. The test is so consistent. Look at the deviation. Um, let me show you the trend line, actually. I should have set up an Alcatronic for my 45 gallon tank with all those elk swings. This will totally control it. Number one, this is for monitoring. And number two, it has the ability to actually control dosing as well as needed. And that's what I'm gonna set up right now. Um, I thought I don't need to set up dosing for at least uh, another two or three months until I added more corals, but apparently that is not the case. Again, we're sitting at 5.51 dKH um, and pH is sitting at about 7.5. I'm dosing a two-part solution from ATI. It's called Coral Essential Pro. Uh, first part is alkalinity. Second part, I believe, is calcium, all the trace elements. So it's a really simple setup. I'm using pump one, pump two. 3, 4, 5 are empty right now. In the future, I may dose on nitrate and phosphate as needed. And the dosing containers or the solution containers right here, right next to the unit. So I'm gonna close this up, flip it over, park it over there. And just like that, dosing is already set up. This was super easy compared to setting up the Alcatronic, which is really easy as well. At the moment, I have not really linked up the Dosatronic with the Alcatronic yet. I wanna make sure all the level gets up to speed. I'm targeting maybe like 7.5 or 8, and then I'm gonna link them together. So when the Alcatronic notice that the uh, elk consumption is more than the doser is dosing, it can like do an extra dose or, uh, of equal parts in order to maintain the value. And that's where really this combo shines. The next morning, Good morning reefers, it has been about two and a half days since I've set up the Alcatronic and about a day since I set up the Dostronic. I have not really linked them up together yet, meaning that I'm not using Alcatronic to drive the Dostronic. And the simple reason is that after I installed the Alcatronic, I noticed how low my alkalinity actually is. It's sitting at about 5.5 dKH, which I was totally not expecting. I was expecting around 7-ish and I could get by with no water change or no dosing for at least another two, three months until I started adding the corals, but that simply was not the case. So like you saw, I installed the Dostronic a day ago really quickly. I think I hooked everything up in about 40 minutes or so. Since then, I put the Dostronic on a schedule and also done a few manual dosing to boost the level up a little bit quicker. So far, the doser has been operating as expected. I cannot really comment on the smart features yet because I have not paired the Dostronic with the Alcatronic, but if the Alcatronic is any indicator of how the Dostronic is going to work with the Alcatronic, Woo! The test has actually been running in the background while I was talking. I want to show you guys the noise level. Um, you can see the DKH level right off the bat. Right now it's uh, 6.04. I've been slowly raising it like I mentioned. And for the last day and a half, I've been running tests on the hour simply because I've been dosing and I want to see like the trend, whether I'm doing it a little bit too fast or if it's right. And let me tell you, the ability to see a trend line has been an absolute game changer already in terms of uh, how I look at the tank. It's kind of hard to convey, um, but if you test for alkalinity uh, regularly and you plot them on one of the apps that can show you the trend line, do you know how useful and how important seeing that trend is? I can look at data table, it'll tell me something, but to actually see the whole thing on a graph and to see the deviation between each test, especially on the hours or like every four hours or how many hours that you can set. And that's actually one of the selling point of the Algotronic because it's actually pretty generous in terms of like the test interval you could set. The ability to see that on a data table, the ability to see that on a trend line has been tremendous, even for the last two and a half days. And I'm not sure if I can successfully translate that idea um, across the video because it did not really translate to me before. I've read forums. I've looked at video reviews on the Alcatronic as well as uh, other auto testers. The common theme seems to be that seeing the trend of the different elements has been an absolute game changer in the way that other people keep their reefs. And I was like, okay, that must be nice. But it never really hit me how important or how nice of a thing that is until I actually see the beautiful trend line right on my phone. In fact, looking at the data table or the trend line, I can I know exactly what happened there. There are times where I did some many dosing where the DKH value jump up a little bit. Seeing how tight these values are gives me a lot more uh, confidence in terms of the test results. Uh, accuracy. And that's one thing that I consistently see for the Alcatronic as well. People saying that it's really accurate. Once you have it up and running, usually just problem free. Uh, people are saying that I haven't touched my Alcatronic for a year, except for reloading reagent has been absolutely solid. Uh. 
Hey, future monkey budding in here. I forgot to answer the question of why did I pick the Focustronic versus all the other auto tester out in market right now. First of all, I do have a relationship with the Focustronic company, which makes things a lot easier. But that's not really a reason because I have offers from other company, and I, if I know certain product is not good, I'm not gonna live through the pain of using it on my reef tank. That's simply not gonna happen. With that said, though, I think most of the auto tester on the market has have really good reviews. But for me personally, the reason I went with Focustronic is because of the product pipeline that is coming out. Namely the Mastertronic. I think that's one of the big, big reasons that I ended up choosing Alcatronic over some competitors. If you've been following this channel, you know the elements I test is the alkalinity, the calcium, nitrate, and phosphate. And those two elements, phosphate and nitrate, I realized how important it is near the end of life on my 45 gallon tank. And the upcoming Mastertronic will be one of the few uh, auto tester that will be able to handle testing for uh, nitrate and phosphate. And that, my friend, is one big, big reason why I went with the Alcatronic camp. Flashback. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. For the comments, I have a question for you guys. Do you use an auto tester? If so, what do you use and what has your experience been with that auto tester? And if getting an auto tester is something that you're thinking about, which one are you picking and why? With that said, I'm gonna see you guys next Sunday at 12 14 chat. Bye. my fingers at this keep turning yes i think we're in business